just heard is not the sound of Jimmy Dalpiazzi's <laughs> horrible horn playing. It was Thank the horrible. It was my horrible it's tone your deaf horrible voice. Horn. You know what's good about uh, knowing that you're tone deaf? I have no idea. Well, you don't be know. Good about that. But I'm going to tell you what's <laughs> yeah. good about it. When I was, uh, I, I'm going to introduce our guest in one second after this quick story. When I was in uh, middle school and high school, I participated in the school plays. Uh, and I, every single time I was cast as the tree or something in the, as, the as, big, as, the as I could do the, the least bed. damage as possible <laughs> because I was a tone deaf, could not sing. sing. Oh my goodness. Not a great dancer, not a terrible dancer, but, but particularly bad at uh, <laughs> um, singing. Right. Like <laughs> really, really bad. And what's great is uh, my daughter, uh, Madeline, um, said to me, we were talking about. Uh, she's a, she's a, she would be a great actor, but as far as singing, she recognized that everyone in our family is are terrible uh, singing oh singing voices. But I'm glad that she is <laughs> self aware enough to know that we are not singers. Well, look, just don't you know remind her all the time because that can be hurtful. When oh. people remind you all the time that you're not a very good singer. Oh Pat is staring at <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy right now. The death stare, yeah. the Vunja face, and the, and the and the the, the that hard. was like that was similar to the honeycomb <laughs> stare, is what she was just giving you. Yeah, the oh eye, goodness. the eye. Yeah. Uh, I want to introduce our guest, and I got another story quickly. Pat and Jimmy Dalpia are here. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. And Kim is here with us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So <laughs> another story um, is uh, we had a honeycomb stare situation yesterday at Sandpiper Bakery that backfired on me. Oh, 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 really? Backfired. How so? We got there around ten fifteen, and on the on the on the board they had a breakfast sandwich, a breakfast sandwich that sounded really delicious, and I asked. If I could have a, for the breakfast sandwich, and the guy said, uh, "We don't make those till 11. What? We, don't, <laughs> make the breakfast sandwich until eleven? <laughs> I mean, it was bread, a couple pieces of ham, and and whatever spread that they put on there. Hey, Ed. Hello. Ed Collie just walked in. Oh Good my morning. God. Good morning. Is it Good bacon? Morning. Bacon and ribs. Bacon and ribs. Oh, oh my God. God. Nice. I'll put this right here. Oh. Eric Lord coming through. Oh. Eddie oh. delivery man. Wow. That is awesome. Is this made by made Eric. by Eric? Made oh, by gosh. Eric. Nice. So awesome. So anyway, so anyway, so I I kind of gave the guy the long awkward pause. Like, are you serious? You can't put together. You like you're cutting bread all day. You know what I mean? You can't. Put a slice in the bread, put the ham on the bread, and then they're not until 11. But, you know, like a little bit, maybe a, maybe like five or six second awkward, like eye-to-eye, -eye, right, right. you know, honeycomb stare, sandpiper bakery stare now. In, right, like, right. In, 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 in case. <laughs> and what happened? So we sat back down, we sat down, we ordered, a, you know, there's five of us, we ordered quite a bit worth of, right. excellent, their, their bakery is, is, right. is really excellent. Yeah, delicious. Um, Great scone, great chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate like croissant. Chocolate well, the, croissant. The, the best croissant, I think, is their almond croissant. Um, oh. And then they also have an almond chocolate croissant. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, that's so, the one. So we sat down, and Madeline, it was her idea. She goes, Dad. <laughs> she goes, Dad, I think that I, I think I should go up and should I give him the honeycomb there and ask for the, for the sandwich? <laughs> and it was... It was so. It was, this is about ten minutes had passed since I went up there, right. and she patiently sat in line, and she got there, and we we're ready to leave, but we we're all like on the edge of our seat to, to, to watch the too. awkward because she was going to give the guy the honeycomb stare, and the long awkward stare when he when he denied face. her, yeah, and he told her he she could have the sandwich. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Love it, love it. Well, who can resist that sweet face? So now I had to wait till we were all ready to leave, and it backfired, and I had to wait for ten more minutes to get my sandwich. <laughs> the sandwich was great, uh, but oh yeah, it was it was it was a fun That's fun little funny. scene there. But Sandpiper Bakery is is doing good work. Yeah, we love that. You know what? Uh, I discovered yesterday too. Uh, they have uh, guest roasters, guest 
coffee roasters there. Oh, really? On a rotating basis. Oh, that sounds Which I, I've never heard of. Right. I love our... Ha- uh, thank you, ideas. Pat and Jimmy, for my happy You're belly welcome. coffee. Love. The way to start the day. That time who the roasters are going to be? It's on the board. They it have is. a board. They have like the uh, chalkboard um, with oh. who with is the roasters. Do, the roasters. Huh. Yeah, what a good idea. If they have a line, it'd be, you know, be interesting. Yeah. Very Especially good. if you want to follow a roaster, you know, yeah, or pick up new beans for yourself. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, good point. Gloucester Joe's is, is, you know, I thought the Gloucester Joe's fell off the map because we hadn't heard from them yeah, for a long time. Uh, Pauline is carrying Gloss and Joe's coffee. I saw it there, and I saw it someplace else right. that we were. Was it at the cave? Because the cave used to carry it. Mm, I don't think so. I haven't heard from me. Misty or Larry yeah. in a while. But, but I thought the same thing, because I hadn't seen or heard about it. Because they were... And I wondered... They were really big on social media. You couldn't go on social media without seeing them posting something. No, it wasn't something. yesterday. It was... Oh. Uh, it'll come. But I did see it somewhere else, and I thought, oh, good, good. Glad to see it. Okay, I need to mention our Cape Ann Community Cinema. Uh, the They sponsor the podcast as far as uh, giving two tickets to a, a person yeah. who shares the uh, the podcast on Facebook. This week's uh, winner is Jen Cullen, our friend Jen oh, Cullen. Jen it's two tickets, Very good. Yeah, two tickets to uh, Cape Ann Community Cinema. Um, so I have to get those to her. She ordered a couple calendars, so I gotta give. I'll, oh, I'll, wonderful! Uh, I'll give it. I'll did put you, them did in your her. calendar sell out? No, there's six left. Oh. But th- that's it's only been since Thursday. Right, that's amazing. It, they, you yeah. know what I think? Like the people that it, there were a ton of repeat orders <laughs> from last year. Yeah. yeah. So the people who ever got them last year, that's great. Um, like they they recognize. I like the, oh, the size is a really good size to just sit on your desk and the presentation yeah. with how I it stands it up. Um, that's perfect. And it's uh, isn't it as far as a gift? Yeah, like oh, to, to yeah. They have to just stash little, that in your purse little, or have little, it in your glove yeah. compartment because for that awkward, inevitable, yes. awkward There's situation, always when that. someone gives you a gift. But not only that, like teachers' gifts. Did, what, did, oh, that's you guys were teachers. Yes, Jimmy and Pat were teachers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, I, I imagine that the the music teacher didn't get many gifts. Oh, oh he got him. He got really? Him. Yeah. Oh, boy, did I. The music really? teacher is so beloved. I'm sure you got pot. Mouth. Well, you know, not saying anything, but when that movie, Mr. Holland's Opus, came out, yeah. oh, boy, you know, everyone recognized. Went back to that, because, and, I, and I can relate to that, because my district was like that. I came into a situation like that, but, um, yeah, uh, people yeah. were very good um, families, Yeah. very appreciative, uh, because you take care of some of the kids and sometimes yes. you know, do some things. And but there's kid, and also I think kids in music, kids who are involved in music are oftentimes they they're you know they're very bright, but they could also have music could be like something that they can excel at, yeah. where they may not in other areas. And so to have somebody like you to you know with you with them under your wing, I'm yes. sure you provide a wonderful. And I and I was, and I was also a coach too, so. That's a I got the share. Yeah, yeah. That's a so way yes, way. we got a lot of gifts, and she she got a fair amount. Teachers really appreciate gifts, huh, don't they? They do. Yes, it's they nice like to know that they recognized. For, we yeah. taught high school, so that's a little different. Middle elementary is a different, yeah. um, right. a different animal altogether. Then, then, because in elementary school, I think it's a thing where you really give your teacher a gift. But I think as they as you. The kids yeah. get older. It isn't right. necessarily. Right. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. It means, I don't know, to us it meant a lot, yeah. especially from the high school kids. Because yeah. usually that meant they did it on their own. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. You know, yeah. and not, and mom and dad weren't doing it for right. them, which is always wonderful. But, right. um, yeah. no, that's very. So, uh, the, the, the calendars. I mean, the size. That's a really Cause nice like, one. Because, like, especially yeah. little kids, like grade school and middle school, mm-hmm. like, to. It, yeah. You know, they don't have That's to lug some get. big present in. Right. You can stick it in their backpack, yeah. and the, the kid and hands the it to the teacher. Probably going to use it, right. and right, they're going right. to use well, it. I had, a, I had a desk, and um, you know, my desk was right. I I was right in the band room. I wasn't one that had the office on the side, and they all knew it. So that's where I doing all my music. I live out of there doing all my show planning and stuff. So any gift I got, yeah, a lot of that, it was there because the kids would see it. Yeah. Uh, and that was big for me. I wanted the kids to see I'm using it, not like thank you, 
and it went over it to the side. Closet. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. calendars like that. Yeah. You know, by uh, far. we're not talking about how beautiful the photos are. Right. Either. Oh, I know. <laughs> so this is good. Is I mean, it, your photos are gorgeous. It takes a little Changing while to like edit the sizes thing. for the calendar oh, to yeah. make sure they fit in a. It's a little tricky. The way, the way, the way that you want them in there. Right. Yeah. But, um, you know, I keep up. After last year, <laughs> digging through a million photos, this year I, I was smart enough to have a little folder oh, that, that when I took idea. one that I thought would be good for it, oh, I just smart. stuck it stuck in, it so in I there. didn't have to dig as, as much as I did the previous idea. years. Yeah, very smart. Because I, I do calendars for my family, Oh yeah? and uh, that's a problem, going through the past year yeah. and digging through, oh. like, I know I have this one, you know, yeah. whatever, <laughs> and, but it, it, <laughs> you know, it takes me yeah. to, I do, I do the folder, but I don't do it until it's, you know, time to do the calendar so it'd be much smarter to do it throughout the year so there's a i got a link if anybody wants to buy one uh there'll be a link in the because uh, there's six left I'm, I'm thinking about the hats sold out in two days yeah they went quick so if it i'm thinking about getting like another dozen made because if people want them, if if, if people I'm want them, just go. let just let I me know say. and I'll put in another order for right. for I'm like a dozen gonna, or so. I don't so. think you're going to huh? get stuck with them. It's not even December yet. It's not even December, December, right? right. You're not right. Gonna stuck with them. I, yeah, I know. I just, all right, maybe I will. Maybe I'll order another dozen. Um, so that was great. Yesterday, Pat and Jimmy, a big time Gloucester day. I was only downtown for a little bit, but I want you to go through. This is an example of holiday time in Gloucester and we had yeah. perfect weather. It was the perfect day oh, for... It was gorgeous. Oh, it was gorgeous. I woke up early because the sun uh, came up and in our new place it comes up right to... Oh, it's a really pretty spot where the sun comes up. Anyway, we got an early start. So we went out and um, went right down to the uh, lobster trap tree set up right around nine and um, looked at what they were doing and mostly at that point they were kind of standing around you know sort of Super talking to each other figuring things out waiting for other people to show up and stuff like that and many of the stores weren't open yet uh so we went up to morning glory to have a late breakfast and well late for us i guess and it was it was great in there they were surprised how quiet it was I was a little surprised too when I walked in. I was expecting it's, it's usually very busy there. It's a Saturday morning. Yeah, I thought it would yeah. be very busy. Um, had our breakfast, which was great as always. They're so friendly in there, and uh, but and looking out at the boulevard and the and the water, it was just oh my god, it was gorgeous. What I really like is um, I pulled in by the uh, Cape Ann Brewery, the parking there, yeah. and. There were so many parking spaces. I told my wife I was seriously thinking about parking sideways just because I could. <laughs> um, I, you know, so I, I parked there and I said, "It's a good spot to walk from." I said, about "This everywhere. is it. Yeah. We're going to oh, walk from okay. here." So oh, we idea. walked up and walked up um, up this the main drag, and then we came up one of the side roads. And even though stores weren't open yet, they a lot of people were there setting up. You know, for the signs and so they're putting their ribbons mm -hmm. out yeah. small business yeah. saturday mm -hmm. they're putting things in the window so i, I thought that was so cool that you know if uh, with the music theme cue the music you know you put a little christmas music or something and here's these guys scurrying around mm -hmm. sitting yeah. up their <laughs> house and while yeah. i'm watching some of the workers come in early with their coffee and they get to the door and they say oh i'm glad you're here we got to get this done we went into one store um the florist store that was on Sage Floral. Sage, Sage Floral. Floral. We went down there, and they were setting up outside and inside. Wow. And um, we were walking around that, and they kept apologizing to us a hundred times. Oh, we're so sorry. I know you're looking at this. We'll move this out of your way. We're going, come on. You're setting up. We're Everybody was in, in a, good, a good mood. Oh. The sun was shining. It was we, gorgeous. Yeah, and we went into the hardware store. Yeah. We went into the floral store. We went into uh, Design of Mine which is where the old uh, it, it's down at the other end yes yeah, it's, it's down at the, the opposite end. yeah right. um near, and she, near where um there's cafe I, bush bushaka how do you say it bishu bushaka it's right down there it's next to virgilio's almost oh right. so that's in the right. west it used end. to be the tv yeah. it used yeah. to be the tvh Right. The that's TV it. Oh, okay. okay. I kept there. saying. So what, what, what type of goods did they sell there? Uh, she's got lots of shawl type things. 
and, they're called, and they're, they're um, called flutter scarves. Right. So they're like they're basically like a rectangle with a hole cut out, and mm-hmm. but then they in there's in soft materials, and they so and they, heavier, they drape in a fluttery right. type of so way. So filling the the void that uh, yes, the, the, I would say <laughs> so. Yeah. Pack a store and there's them. some jewelry in there, mm-hmm. yeah. and some and and it was great because it was twenty percent. Almost all the stores had some special mm-hmm. discount, um, and I bought a, a scarf for my friend who doesn't listen to the podcast so it won't be a big <laughs> problem. Do, do you know who uh, owns this store is Melissa Giacalone. Paul Giacalone's um, ex-wife. Um, do, do you know Melissa? Paul Giacalone is the guy with 90 plus cigars? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's his um, and they're still friends. You know what I mean? Oh, but good. Yeah. So it's his, it's, it's his former wife's um, shop. Melissa. Oh nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. so yeah so there was a discount and a free uh, she gave me a scarf to go with it with Aww. the with the purchase That's and uh, we had a nice little chat about the places she likes to go take pictures and every, everybody did you take just, any photos there not in there no i did not uh yeah well <laughs> sometimes you think of it and sometimes you, know you don't you know what joanne that was the <laughs> there. i think joanne did a big st- a, a nice piece in it either on the blog or on good morning Gloss or joanne yes Silva. i think so, so. Silva did? yeah so you can find a um a link yeah, oh, you can find a link to link back to Melissa's store. Design. Right. Everybody was again? in a good design of, design of mine, okay. and she's um, she's a lovely lady, and she also designs the jewelry as well. Oh, yeah. does she? Yeah. Wow, awesome. And we went down to uh, Animal. Yeah. Well, we were, <laughs> it's making us sound like we went, you yeah, know, back and forth. Were but you doing well, that? no, we were not really. But we did go back occasionally to check to see, okay, what's what's the tree doing now? We did go into um, the Cape Ann auction place, and I, That's I don't Fred know. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. And and I <laughs> saw, I I felt there like I wanted to do something with Fred somehow. So I bought one of the old pictures, and it's one of the um, Rockport uh, Santa arrivals oh, um, picture. Because I thought, oh, well, really? if I have this oh, and I get the new one, then yeah, forgetting that. I wasn't going to be here that day. But um, Walt there told me that he thought the picture had been taken in the 1960s. It wasn't labeled as such, but it appeared to be probably, you know, maybe yeah, about right. the right time there. Uh, as a as a hmm. guest, but now I have this picture and it makes me feel. I don't know. It's a little shout out to Fred. I, I oh, very nice. Know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's got a uh, a cabinet in the back room, and it's all Fred's photos, and it's all down mm-hmm. to a cabinet. Yeah. Um, so we had a great day. Yeah. What's 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 uh, that's Walt Kalenda's place, yeah. right? Yes. What was the yes. name of it again? I think it's called Cape Ann Auctions. Yeah. Okay. Right next. Uh, it's right by Bananas. Right. Yeah. 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 Bananas. No, I know. Yeah. Where Fred. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had a great day. Yeah, just walking up and down, popping in all the different stores, and it really got crowded. I mean, I would say by... But everybody was in a good mood, and, and a lot and of people were around. A lot of people out. Yes. It was festive. It was it, really, yes, really yes. festive. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Yeah. Seriously, all they great needed day. was music piped in. You know, if... They could do that. They, if they piped in music, I'm yeah. not trying they to keep pounding that theme, but if they piped it in and the... Streets while you're going down there, yeah, it really would have definitely idea. put you in. That is a good we idea. Could have really a, we could have, we could have broken into a flash mob. Maybe yeah. some of us, some of us could go in. You I'm see how hurtful her. it can be. See, no. you, you could have music at like three different. St- you could have it like yeah. queued up three different state. You know, West End, East End. I love how Vigilio's pipes out the. Uh, yeah, music. I love oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I love that. It's awesome. I still have to sing along with some of it. I should put my hat out there. So I was on. Th- I was down. I just missed you. I did a little Facebook Live thing. Yeah, doing a little we bit more. We just missed each other. Yeah, we just yeah. missed each other. We went down there early on. Uh, do a shout out to Safathia, who I and Sebastian Pizza. I think sponsored like four pizzas for the people that put the Aww. tree together. Yeah. They were working hard. They, oh, oh my, they, they're full. Ed, <laughs> Ed can talk. Ed speak to how much long, work that is. Long history with that tree. Yeah. Long, yeah. long history with that tree. I came up my Facebook thing today, and I should have shared it from eight years ago. Oh. You know, and I was I was texting back and forth with Jeff. I didn't make a broadcast, so it was just him and I. And the year I'll never forget was the year we almost gave up. Um, we had the tree up. Nice. 
I mean, and we used to collect old crap. Paul Morrison lived a small reference to this. Oh. We go, and we were lucky if we're getting 20 here, 15 there, 30 there. Oh, these, oh. Yeah. Dig them out of the snow. Yeah. I mean, wet, cold, crumbling, falling apart. But Jeff and I, we had the tree all built, and we're up there putting on lights. I think it was the first year we did lights. And we're on the back side of the um, tree, and freezing, freezing rain. It was one of the a few times I actually took a tub when I got home. I yeah. filled it with water and I just sunk in there to the bone. But we're looking at each other and says, you know, does anybody really give a shit anymore about this type of thing? And we're bemoaning the fact that we're getting drenched, nobody's there to help and all this stuff. And these two old, old ladies are coming up. I mean, we peeked around and they did have walkers. I mean, they were really old. And then we heard one of them say, you know, I look forward to this every year. These young people oh. put this to, you know. Oh, and both of us looked at each other go. and said, okay, see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And it was one of those moments yeah. that, you know, you're, you're so going downhill, the weather's beating you up. and the, Some, They got a gorgeous day. So they did the definitely. polar opposite of what Ed just <laughs> described is what they had yesterday because yeah. they had brand new oh. uniform traps with no bougie green. bougie sticking out of them to get cut yeah. on. They had like 50 degrees sunny weather, mild, yep. and uh, I mean it's still a lot of work. Red but green. but some years uh, that the, it is come, the wind is coming yeah. sideways and yeah, it's sleeting yeah. and it's like that alleyway. yeah, right. boom, right. Right. yeah, you outside the kisser. Mm -hmm. yeah. But everybody loves that tree. Yeah. You should see fun. some. Did you it's look at some of the 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 shares on the the Facebook shares and yeah. on that on those posts yesterday? Yeah, yeah, they I were did. up yeah. there. There yeah. people love that. And it was tree. well documented. I saw three cameras set up. Yeah, who? And one. Well, that was, I think it was John oh, Cooney, right? Oh, okay. I think Sean Henry did too. He was oh. setting up cameras. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sean Henry. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, that was uh, uh, Catherine's husband. Catherine's husband. Yeah, saw her yesterday. Yeah, they were they were there working all. Oh yeah, Ken, Ken's photo from the top. Ken hacked, yeah, yeah, from, yeah. from yeah, his, love the one his from place. Love yeah. the one from the top. That was yeah. great. Uh, so um, I actually we have a shout out to three lanterns. Uh, I just talked to David and uh, Brooks Trap Company makes the traps, but three, three lanterns, lanterns is the one who supplies the traps okay. for this year for the lobster trap tray. It was beautiful, just beautiful. In a green with red yeah. uh, escape fence. So it's very, it's like right in the theme. It, yeah. it looks gorgeous. Um, they look like ornaments. No, we used to trash Rockland for getting new traps, don't forget. <laughs> we used to no, we used to trash Rockland for using... Convicts. Using convicts. <laughs> did. And, and, and also... <laughs> no, <it's laughs> But we used to trash them for using these huge bows, like the Chinese-made bows. bows. Like, oh, all, uh, oh, and okay. that's all they had for decorations with these, right. like... Huge, but like, they were ahead of the curve as far as the lustman went. You remember, I was trying to get them to, you know, go into the lottery system as far as the traps go years ago. Yeah. And the one thing they did have over us is they did the lustman all sponsored by putting in ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I'll buy fifty traps. I'll buy these. They're gonna buy them anyway. Right. You know. So right. when with they had that again, they had that on us, but we trash talked them. Somebody was really loud. <laughs> Somebody was very loud. Yeah, we used to eat them up alive. Yeah, oh well, my god! I, I, All in good fun, who, 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 but some yeah. people like didn't did not didn't get the tongue in cheek. Uh, you know, no, no, none are like ours. It's the handmade, the, the boys, hand, the handmade. All over the top. Just, you know, I mean, there's the, hundreds and hundreds of kids. kids. Each have their part their of that own, tree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Well, that, that was the year. In fact, I remind Jeff, even though we didn't probably like the reference, I says, "You remember whose idea it was to turn this over?" Jeff and I had already suffered, and I says. It was Leslie's idea. I said she was there with Bruce Tarr and Who's Leslie? Kirk, Leslie, Leslie Gould, his ex-wife. Oh. And he says, well, you could have gone without reference. I says, hey, she's part of the history of the tree, whether you like it or not. There you go. So, so they'll, they'll be auctioned off. Is my understanding. So when does the I, I didn't see when the auction takes place or how that happens or you know. Okay. It's usually right after it comes down. They right set up there. over Cruz Port. Okay. And um, they're off awesome to you know Hot Haven as well. And um, they took the best ones, and then of course there's always. Are you talking about the, I think she's talking about the traps at the Dr. Traps. Oh no, yeah, no, I don't know when that's. Oh, they are happen. gonna. Oh, okay, you yeah. did see them. Okay. Yes, yeah. that's what the woman who was helping told me yesterday that they were going to be auctioned off. That's pretty wild. Yeah, because yeah, those yeah. traps are not cheap. No, they're, they're a lot nice. of money. Um, uh, my my day yesterday after I left there, I went to, and I'm so thankful that I went there. 
because I, I didn't realize how beautiful of a room it is. Nine Wallace in Beverly, uh, Peter and Vicki Van Ness and the mayor uh, tickets uh, so that my kids could go see this. It was like a magic slash comedy show with a Christmas theme kind of. And uh, Bryson Lang was the guy who played. But so Safati invited me to go. And it, it was, it was a sad. You know, when you have three kids in the house at varying ages, you're like, we got to have a plan. Right. I can't <laughs> sit inside the house all day long. We will, you know, yeah. there's going to be a murder, right? Yeah. So we, um, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, you know, there's this, this th we got invited on. to go to this thing. Let's do it. Okay. Then I, then after I agreed to go, I looked at the flyer and they said, like, Santa's going to be there. And then I was like, oh, mm. my, I'm scratching my head. Like, I don't know hurt. if this is going to be like my kids are a little mm -hmm. bit older. And mm. are they going to, is it going to be a little kitschy for them? And is, mm. is it going to be just murder for me to sit through two hours of right. some like, you know, thing that's really intended for grade Young schoolers? Kids, but but yeah. we got there and this, this, this entertainer, Bryson Lang, the whole crowd was laughing and completely entertained start to finish. So, and, so the and kids this, liked it very the much. The kids liked it. And uh, I would encourage, because like, they have like comedy shows and they have musicians there. Uh, I am gonna, I usually scroll past the music listings on the blog. Mm -hmm. And I am not gonna be scrolling past them anymore because I am purposely <laughs> going to look for an event at yeah, Nine yeah. Wallace, um, because it's a, a intimate room. It's really great, and they have beer and wine there, um, and it's not in, it's not expensive. Um, so I love comedy shows. So and it's not we don't have to travel all the way to Kowloon's to go see it. So it has opened up my eyes to Nine Wallace, um, and I am going to be purposely looking for great, a great. Show. great. Um, it, it's kind of like A and B Burger on Cabot Street. Okay. The next street is Wallace, going towards Salem. Uh, mm -hmm. The next street, the next right is Wallace, and like when you make that corner, you'll see the yeah. sign for Nine Wallace, mm -hmm. Nine Wallace Street. Yeah, uh, beautiful, beautiful space. And uh, thank you to them for hosting us, uh, to Mayor Safathia and uh, Peter and Vicky. Uh, and they had this, they had food there too. Like there was pizza. Uh, Rasta pizza was yeah, served. Good. We had pizza you could cool. buy, and um, so oh, if you not, could, just, win -win. not just popcorn and candy. Not just popcorn. They had yeah. like some whoopie pies oh. and uh, oh, popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a win. It was a total winner. <laughs> uh, it was good meal and dessert. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was fantastic. Uh, before we get off of the lobster trap tree, uh, I want to say December 9th is the Middle Street Walk. Middle Street Walk folds in about. 25 events. events that happen on the same day that we say every year <laughs> it's a, if you have children even if you don't have children oh yeah it's a must attend i go okay. by myself even you could absolutely okay. go by yourself and yeah. culminates with the lobster trap tree lighting at the end of the day but actually after that this year they have that the harbor voices the event harbor at, voices city hall. at city hall Right, but, at, um, right after the, or is it? I think it's playing during. Right after, I think it's something like because I have that written down because I want to check in on that, because and that's for like the eighth and ninth, and it's something like four thirty to eight. It's okay. a kind of a little bit of an odd time right. slot, right. Um, so at least go, in my mind. Right, so you but, can go to the lighting and then go right to city hall. That's right. right. But, right. In any case, yeah. the Universal Church, the Sergeant that. House. Right. There's like, but. At the Middle Street Walk, you could spend the day downtown Gloucester, yeah. and there are a uh, dozen different places that open up where they used to be. They have their yeah. gingerbread competition. Right, those are all over City Hall. Hall. Those That's are right. beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah. I have so in the show notes of this podcast, there's a link to the schedule for the Middle Street Walk. Um, I encourage everyone to go, yeah. and the lots of trap tree lighting show. is really fun. Really, really fun to, oh, to yeah. be at. Santa shows up, and there's always the singing. And is, yeah. You know, there was a sound system that night. Usually, <laughs> it sounds like yeah, that. they have yeah. yeah that we <laughs> always had something. A couple of years ago, they invited but, me to MC it, and there was a, there was like, the Santa and his elves were there, and they were hammered. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and they were kind of like pull. 
so they were and everybody knows who these people are really. and they wanted and they were like the guy david's like okay i want you to do the countdown but santa didn't want to give up the mic and i'm like i don't really care i don't have to do the countdown <laughs> and the santa was like adamant but david like really wanted me to do it for some reason so it's like this power struggle oh not between God. me because i could care less but my kids were there <laughs> and so drunk santa it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny that's a classic story it was oh so funny that's a classic uh, story wow. so yeah it's a good time uh go ahead, what you mean no i'm just saying because <laughs> oh god um the, oh i want to mention this december 9th at feather and wedge there is a, a border wine dinner uh, i'm going to give you the details of that. so after you go the middle street walk and december after got, 6th oh december 6th so i was going to say if it's the 9th then you could yeah, end no. up at feather and wedge no they're still doing the ladies and the men's shopping night they yeah, that. yeah, yeah, we have that. Talk, okay. about that. talk about that. Okay. that so Feather and Wedge on December sixth. It's a Wednesday night at seven p.m. A four course dinner uh, and four Bordeaux uh, cellar selections. Uh, and mm. uh, Andrew Ehrlich of Wine Cask Imports. Is that Andrew the Wine Bear? Is that? The, I don't know. I don't the, know. I don't know if it is. I don't want to say that for sure, but I, it may be. Uh, but it sounds like a great take. Wet Feather Wedge on a normal night is a, is a great take. And they always have a really special menu. I, when they, This is going to be a no-brainer. Uh, back to that. Um, so wait, Ed, what did, you, what did you mention? Ladies Night is December 7th, which is oh, Thursday, the Thursday. day after Feather and Wedge. Can have a That's busy week. That's a busy week, week. Busy yeah. Week. That's a good take, too. Yeah. And I, the schedule, the the ske the downtown Gloucester, uh, they have downtown Gloucester has their own web page, okay. and they have a schedule of downtown uh, Gloucester of events. Ladies nights, because there's ladies nights, ladies nights, nights men's nights, night. They have all the different and family night or right. Don't they have uh, that now uh, too? Hold on, I'll, I can uh, okay. open that link and t and read off a little bit. Okay, we're going to start uh, from uh, November twenty sixth. What tree lighting is tonight? Oh, the Kent Circle tree lighting Kent is Circle tonight. Is yeah. tonight. By the time this is, oh, it's at 3 p.m. So but if you're listening to this, go down it's and right. check out the tree light. The tree, it's probably going to be lit up. It's all lit up. Um, I Kent Circle. Uh, December 7th, 44th annual Ladies Night. December 14th, Customer Appreciation Night. I don't know what that is. I wonder if that has to do with, the, maybe they're lumping the men's night in with Customer Appreciation Night. December 9th, Middle Street Walk. December 9th, also Family and Friends Day, downtown Gloucester. Uh, the Lobster Pat Pot tree lighting as well, Middle Street Walk. December 21st is the men, is Men's Night. <laughs> I see why they do that. <laughs> yeah, that's late. Last yeah, that's minute. Exactly. Okay. And Smart. also, I think the tw is the 21st, because Christmas is the 25th. Yeah. So is that right. a Thursday or a Friday night? That's going to be uh, December well, just time shopping. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Thursday, I think. A Thursday night. Yeah. Just, I, I think they do them all on, uh, on, on. But whatever it is, it's December twenty-first. So don't get confused. Uh, that's for, yeah. for the last-minute men's night. Where am I? Yeah, my brother-in-law shops on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. I don't call that. I just write tell. I call that smudge. I just write tell for Christmas Eve. They had great deals. It's stuff that I was interested in buying for people. Yes, everything's like deeply discounted. It's deeply yeah. discounted, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And this year it's on a weekend, so that's going to yeah. be that is, huge. Right, that'll be a Sunday night. Yeah. Right? I'll be yeah. shopping in Key West this year again. Oh, look at you. Down. Oh, are you going someplace where, um, do you know where you're going is intact? Oh, yeah. yeah it's oh, I, I, I have quite a few places that I know. I'll be in Florida for the winter. I go to Everglades. Oh, I run into a mess of um, seniors down there. I'm the baby at the group. <laughs> he, loves it. he loves it down there. I have that. a blast down there. <laughs> yeah. We have a party and a half. There's about 30 of us strong. And the food, which of course I died for anyway, and the company and the knowledge. Because everybody brings something different to the table. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got this couple that knows every insect, tree, you name it. You go for a nature hike with them. You're going to get something, something out, out of it. Oh, well, you know? wonderful. And everybody's of a like spirit, you know. Yeah. Um, we have people with half a million dollar mobile homes and people like me with a tent. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes the whole mixture. Nice, nice. But my son's down in Key West, so I'll be down there expecting a second grandchild out of them Aww. in February. So I'll be well, down there for Thanks. <laughs> I'm having a blast with the grandkids. There you go. Um, 
I wanted to uh, do a shout out to Ron Gilson, and I'm happy. I was very happy because his film, they when they showed it publicly, was not at an optimal time for probably ninety percent of the of people. His uh, his film, they got it's on YouTube. We put it on the blog. I stickied it for three or four days. Yes, it's, it's not stickied anymore, but you can search Gloucester's Golden Age of Fishing Part Two. Um, and um, and is part one on YouTube also? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Right. I imagine it is, but okay. I'm not sure. But we have a, we have a, I have the link is in the show notes. Um, yeah, he, that's great it, that it's is, up for people. Is he watch. going to have other screen? Are there any other screenings scheduled that you know? I of? told him he really ought to, but I, I so far I don't know of any. Oh, okay. I don't All know right. of any. Kim, speaking of movies, you went to see Coco at Gloucester Cinema. Yes. And yes. you thought it was. Be a beautiful be story. Beautifully done. See, we went with my daughter, who's not a big movie goer. You know, we talked about this before. That generation doesn't necessarily... Yeah, because Kate doesn't go to right. movies. And um, so we were, you know, a little bit worried, but, <laughs> but she loved it too. Tom loved it. Um, it's beautifully done, very authentic. Um, it's a de Dia, de Dia de Muerta uh, kind of yes. theme, right? So the story, it's, I'll just say a little bit of the story so we don't give it away, but it's about a little boy who wants to be a musician. His family doesn't want to be a musician. He goes through a dream where he ends up in the land of the dead. And most of the story takes place there and he meets his ancestors and it's, um, it's just very, the colors and the cinematography, not, uh, not the cinematography, the animation, <laughs> the animation right? picture, it's very, yeah. um, it's so culturally authentic and it's been very, very well received in Mexico. It's been the number one um, selling movie. It was just released here in the U.S. over Thanksgiving, but it was released in Mexico over the Day of the Dead celebrations and it's been the number one movie in Mexico for over a month. The so, Day of the Dead it seems to me in the past three or four years has become a big really culture, blossomed. big thing yeah, in the really United blossomed. States. Yeah, because right? yeah. the, the, the Kimberleys yeah. have a party every year. I would year. agree, yeah. yeah. It, like, I never like even knew what it was about, about. and then all of a sudden, yeah. like that, the, the iconic skull, the, yeah. right, uh, right. you know, with all the flowers coming out right, or whatever. Right. I wonder if that was a spawn of, remember Ed Hardy? Um, Ed Hardy jeans and Ed Hardy, um, oh, yeah, it was very totally popular in Las Vegas, and uh, no, I'm thinking of somebody and, else. But Ed Hardy was a is a designer, yeah. a jeans designer, I believe. But uh, used did that Dia de Muerte like he did, logo. He did all the skulls. He did. Is he the one who did all the white skulls on everything? Is that what you're He did about? a lot of skulls, oh. and, but it was like how long ago? It, I want to say it was like six years ago. Okay. But I almost want to say he touched off the, uh, and I could be way off base, but the first me. Uh, Awareness. My my rec uh, recognition of this icon was Ed Hardy had it on okay. a lot of his the T-shirts and everything else, um, and that was about six or yeah, seven years know. ago. Well, they they started they started creating this film about six years ago, so oh. that's how long it takes wow. to bring an animated film. I mean, even before that, but the filmmakers started traveling to Mexico about six years ago just to make sure that they got it, you know, very mm. authentically, culturally accurate. That was really, really important to them. So I wonder succeed. if the guy from Rockport that was involved with Nemo, yeah, you oh. know who I'm talking mm -hmm. about? No, I, you know, I, I don't know his name, but I know that the, I know of his story. Yeah, I mean that he. I wonder if he is still involved with Pixar. Because Pixar is like, it's like, it's like enormous. I wonder if there, if if he was involved in, Nemo, isn't there a Nemo two coming out? Yeah, I thought that there was a Nemo two. Yeah, coming. has it already come out? I thought there was oh. one already. Oh, yeah. it already it came out. Oh, okay. oh, oh, I have so, no idea. Oh, so. so I can't imagine that if you're involved in, if you're involved in that, you wouldn't necessarily. You wouldn't be able to, because right. it takes. Time I don't think you could get more it, right, than one project a, at a time. Yeah. Right, an animated film like I that. I suppose depending on. The guy, okay, so Andrew Stanton was his name, uh, and he is an American film director who's born in '65, so he's a couple of years older than me, uh, and voice actor based at Pixar. His work includes writing and director, directing Pixar, A Bug's Life. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, and I he know it was uh, uh, Bugs Life, Finding Nemo. I'm gonna go uh, to his. Uh, what else? Let's see. 
uh, Toy Story Academy wow. Award for Best Adapted Screenplay for Toy Story 3, directed the sequel to Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, which was released in 2016. Okay. So it was, it was, uh, it was last year. But wow, he is... Wow. Um, what a player. Gee, I right. guess he is. He's, He's right. still... So he is. And look, his uh, cr credits... Um, 2019 Toy Story 4. Four. Oh, so that's what he's working on. God there. Almighty, he right. is doing all right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Also, he has uh, credits in Stranger Things, which is the new show. Big that was cool. Yeah, big that Netflix. That's yeah. big in Netflix. He's this guy's doing well. Born in Rockport, Andrew Stanton. God bless wow. you, buddy. I wonder if he has roots. I mean, I know he has roots here. I wonder if he has uh, family. Family. I mean, if he's doing he anything. Still here. has family. Here. He's the vice president of creativity at Pixar. Pixar. Pixar wow. How would you like oh. to be the vice president of creativity <laughs> somewhere? Mm. I think anywhere. That, yeah, anywhere. Yeah. I'm the vice president of creativity. That he directed two Pretty episodes cool. of the second season of Stranger Things. Okay. Stranger Things right now is big, in case yeah. you didn't know. Yeah. I haven't oh, I seen it. My daughter. Huh? Yeah. I just watched it from the beginning oh, all the way. Did? I think yeah. I think I told um, Eric it was nine hours of watching Stranger Things. Would I enjoy it? I think so. Yeah? You have to start at the beginning. Okay. You really do. But, I might, um, I might check it out. It was, I, I enjoyed it. Our son keeps trying to talk us into watching it, and I don't, I don't, I just can't make myself do it yet. I was stuck sitting down anyway. Yeah. So well, I said, you know what? Yeah. And I'm. I don't watch TV. I haven't watched TV in a couple of years, really. So I'm there. This is this is cool. Yeah. yeah. You know. So I caught up on all kinds of TV. And Netflix is definitely the go-to. Oh, My definitely. God. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's good TV, and you got good, such good programming. Unbelievable. Yeah, you got an unbelievable selection. No matter what you like, you're gonna find something. And it's become right. a verb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. So, oh, so you know that yeah. tells you something about it. That's yeah, it's like Xerox. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Or Kleenex. Used to be. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. All right, I'm putting him into the show notes because uh, I, I'm putting a link to it, the Wik his Wikipedia page. Check out the link uh, in the podcast notes because it's very interesting. His uh, his. Uh, I thought, geez, I mean, if he was around. I'd, I'd like to get him on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, he might have a little. He might have his plate a little full directing episodes. Yeah, but you yeah. never know. He you might have a. Know. He might have love for Kate Bannon coming yeah. on the podcast. He might, he might need a lobster character. We get somewhere. we get Israel Horowitz. So I know. Yeah. I know. We had yeah. uh, Mr. Hall, Brad Hall. Right, Brad Hall. We have yeah. big. We have big people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody from Rockport that knows uh, Mr. Andrew Stanton? Yes. If you if you could reach out to him and say you know maybe a little give back to the community come in on the podcast that we're big fans and uh, we would love that so there you go right right all right uh, and also go see Coco at Gloucester Cinema uh, I was oh Kim you went to see Darlene Love yeah at, we went to see her last night at the Cabot yes it was phenomenal I mean she is her voice. It would be hard to tell her recordings from the 1960s because her, her, the album that she recorded with Phil Spector is the greatest selling Christmas album of all time, I think. So oh. um, she, you would be, and she sang many of the songs on the album as um, a lead, but also as a backup singer because she was, she, she, she's more famous now than she was then because she was just a backup singer back then and she had a lot of songs attributed to other people that she actually sang and um so well letterman her, kind of put her on the map because every year didn't he have her he, in to sing the song he, he had her sing baby please come home so he had he had gone to a show with Paul Schaefer. This was in the, I think, in the early '80s, and um, a Christmas show playing in New York. And then he said um, he invited her to be on the show. And I, th she hadn't done the film yet about backup singers yet. So I think he really did, you know, for 27 years she was on his show. Wow. Thing. But her room just filled the theater. It was unbelievable. Was and it a Christmas show then? Yeah, it's a Christmas okay. show. Beautiful. There's rock um, songs. There's a couple, four or five songs from the Phil Spector Christmas album. There's regular traditional Christmas songs. There's a lot of gospel. She has a fabulous um, backup singer. It's a fabulous band. Her her voice just filled 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 the room. It was beautiful. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Yeah, you you and she's seventy six, and you if you listen to a recording of her singing on the Phil Spector album, 
and listen to just what I got on my phone last night, it, wow. it would be hard to tell the difference. Wow. Kim, there's a her video. Voice, her voice is so powerful. There's a, there's a video, Kim. They posted it yesterday. Of? Darling Love the Cabot performing live November 17th. This can't be. Was it from last year? Because this is the, I think this is the third year that she sung there. Oh, uh, click, link. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Was it from this year? I don't know. I think it's a scam. This this link. So I'm not oh, gonna okay. post mm -hmm. it. Okay. Just click the link in the description to. Yeah, it's. Yeah, that's it's too those, bad. There's a lot of those weird scammy things I've been finding yeah, when I'm looking at things. That's too bad. People take advantage. Uh, it was it was phenomenal. She, I mean, she is 76. And she's out. She's well, just fit. to do that. She's kinda. fit and trim, and she's out on the stage wearing four to five inch spike heel shoes, dancing. And you're mm. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. She just been on the circuit because um, it was a. She, she was a backup singer. She was, but a her voice. I mean, there was no mistake in her voice. Right. It was on TV um, so recently. She, she was a backup six. So, for example, this is one story. Like, um, she. Um, with Baby Please Come Home, mm. I think that's... Well, she did Rebel, you know what I mean? He's yeah. a rebel and he's yeah. a <laughs> I got a feeling it's the yeah. same. The, yeah. the, she's on the talk circuit right now. Yeah, she... And especially at this time of year, like, she'll sing on The View, I think, now. She, now, instead of singing on David Letterman, right. they've invited her to come and sing on The View every year. And, um... But she did so many songs that... I mean, she sang backup for so many people. And even and if you don't know her name or anything, as soon as she opens her mouth, you, 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 you recognize you know. that song. No, that's a classic. Yeah, you know sure. it is. I mean, I can cue up my little uh, thing uh, there that's if you a, want to keep on talking. Like I can, I'll put a link to it. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, but so, I mean, I recorded her last night singing. So, oh, you did? Yeah, just a little bit of now, it. Is it is it legit to do that? Well, you can just hear it. You're not gonna. I mean, we're not gonna get arrested. I uh, I took my son to see BB <laughs> King. You know what? Can you do me a favor? Can you not do it? The reason like why yes. on YouTube, if they uh, if they think yeah. that something sampled, they oh, okay. they put a mark on your YouTube and, that, so and that, that's how I upload the stuff. Oh, you know he's old. He's still bar show. He was a great show. I love I love BB King. Oh, uh, oh, I wanted to mention uh, the snowy owl. I was talking you. Yes. You you told you had mentioned this last week to me, uh -huh. and in my we got distracted. But my my Kate's dad yeah. uh, is a security is the main guy that does security at Crane Beach, and he has told me that there are white so the snowy, the snowy owls, owls at already. Crane already. already. That's and awesome. you mentioned that these the all the signs are in place. Why don't you explain? Okay, so so um, when there's a species that suddenly you see a lot of them it's called an eruption um, and sometimes the reasons are ex explainable and sometimes they're, just, they're not but it's spelled I-R-R -R, not eruption but eruption and um, it looks like all the signs are pointing to a snowy owl eruption this year and the main reason is um, because when about every four or five years tons of lemmings are born in the Arctic. So when there's tons of lemmings born, which is the main food of the snowy owl, then that helps all the babies survive. So instead of you know one or two babe, one or two babies surviving in a in a clutch, you know five, six, seven will survive because there's plenty of food to feed the babies. Oh, right. But then come winter, a lot of these young snowy owls aren't as keen at as as hunting as the adults are and there's much less food around so that's when they start migrating southward so that's so all these signs are in place right now to have a great snowy owl eruption this year so what was the last was it a two years ago three years ago because time flies right now i can't do but we had a year not too long ago so where where people were sight so, see, were seeing so two years ago when i filmed the snowy owl out here that wasn't a super eruption that was just so you're saying we're going to see more than that yeah because so wow. that it was like four it was four years it was almost four years ago i think it was four years when we had a super eruption and you know how how you can tell like i'm talked to this guy who does snowy owl um uh, he's created a snowy owl mission. Um, he's at Mass Audubon in 
the MS Audubon in Canton, I can't think of the name of it, but he's the one who mostly rescues the snowy owls at airports and re-releases them on local beaches. So I've been trying to get him to release an owl on Wingersheet Beach because they mostly release the owls on um, South Shore beaches. But so, I mean, on uh, uh, South Shore and also north of us. So I thought, well, we're right in between. We could release one on Wingersheek Beach. It would be wonderful for our community. Mm. And um, so he has all the numbers from year to year. And they can mostly, and you, how you judge whether it's an extra good, is how many are end up at the airports. Mm. Because that's, um, uh, airports are um, one of their favorite places to, um, to land. There's, I guess there's a lot of, because there's so many flat fields on, you know, there's a lot of, mice and voles running around um, and that's what they want to hunt so that's what they're that, hunting on the beach i wish well. there was a uh, uh and you know how they have the the monarch migration app right that people oh. could report yeah. and then you could see, kind of track right sightings well there are there right. are but it's just for like one or two you know the the ones that they put the trackers on the snowy owls there are um there are ways of, but they're not like, they're Do not they like have, the Are there trackers? Way. There's ones that show yes, where, like yes. the shark tracker, the yes. snowy owl tracker? Yeah, there's, a, I mean, I, I don't know if it's like, like the app thing that you're talking about, but they do track snowy owls. Snowy owl tracker, I'm gonna look it up right now. Okay, so anyway, so what they're eating here is um, all the little mice and, um, but also one thing that we learned um, two years ago when the snowy owl was on the lobster traps is that they're also very attracted to the little birds that like to um, uh, eat what do you, what's the stuff that you call that hangs off lobster traps the barnacles, the barnacles and, all yeah. and all the crusty things right. that so that attracts little sparrows mm -hmm. which then attracts the snowy owls which also attracts peregrine falcons and hawks and things yeah, like that. Yeah, goes so, on. Yeah. There's yeah. very, there's a, okay, there's a great website, projectsnowstorm.org slash tracking snowy owls. And it's some really cool maps with tracks, the, from the tracking and stuff like that. I think I posted links to that on a previous snowy owl post. Awesome. Is there one from, is there any current one that they're tracking right now? I don't know. I don't um, want uh, maps. New England. Um, can you tell from that? I don't. I don't want to mess up. All right. I don't want to distract us. But I'm going to just put a link to this, and we'll do some more. Kim, I'm sure you're going to be reporting on it. So just stay well, tuned for our snowy owl. Let uh, us please let us know. Anybody who sees a snowy owl, let us know, and I'll just drop everything and run over with my movie camera. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love it. So. Um, oh, I. Kim, Anthony, you want to talk about uh, Anthony Bourdain is doing uh, on He's CNN. Doing, he has a show called, what is it called? Parts Unknown. Mm -hmm. And um, I, who's seen that? I mean, I just think it's an awesome show. Yeah. It's on every week. And he goes to um, beautiful or interesting countries all around the world. But the thing is that he just delves so deeply into it. It's not... Um, not just eating it's cooking. not just the eating it's the, cooking. It's the music it's the yeah. cultural the whether it, whether it's like you know when he goes to the mississippi delta he's listening to you know going to nightclubs with music and you know it's a lot of grungy type of places that they go to but with fabulous food, food. they're not yes. going they're not going to the five-star restaurants oh. they're just they're cooking in people's kitchens visiting families homes and the cinematography is it's for just about five or six years now. Yeah, I love this show. The cinematography, I think, is extraordinary too. I mean, the oh. way the shows are edited and filmed, it's beautiful. Well, he's got such a nice laid-back attitude. That yeah, you, you wouldn't yeah. buy him in. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So this week is southern uh, southern Italy, and I don't know if he's going to revisit Sicily because he did go. To, he did do a show on Sicily a couple of years ago. I don't know if he's including that in it or not. The yeah. heel of the boot. Uh, oh. The heel of the boot, uh, legendary, un uh, largely untouched landscapes and colorful locals of southern Italy. Tonight at nine, and tomorrow at uh, no, what is that? Oh, and Monday, twelve a.m. So not oh. they uh, they're gonna replay it, I guess. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, that is. Interesting. I didn't know. Well, I'm not watching TV during the day, so I don't mm. know. That's interesting. It's on <laughs> CNN, so I wonder if you can get that uh, on. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. If there's ne- Netflix characters. Have you ever there. seen the show? I mean, it's. Really you know, I've seen the Anthony seen Bourdain shows. I have not. Uh, I don't think that I've seen mm-hmm. Parts, Parts Unknown. Unknown. Yeah, I, I may know. have, I but it, you know how like it, it was and, uh, what, Andrew, Zimmerman Andrew Zimmerman and him, and, him and, and but that, but I thought that that was on the Food Network. I don't I see bizarre foods. Oh, <laughs> but, but, but you know he what? Went way off. He but went way off. He, but he, but the, it was some. There was some crossover between the two shows, though. It seemed because yeah. Andrew Zimmerman would get a little into local culture of these places oh. where we'd eat the gross food. Well, he started with the cultural aspect first before Bourdain did. Really, Bourdain oh. was still getting hammered when Zimmerman was really getting into the local foods, no matter how disgusting they were. Yeah. Oh. And then all of a sudden, they both woke up at the same time. Zimmerman started getting away from the um, the bizarre foods and more into the cultural aspect, as well as um, Bourdain. Oh. It, it seemed like that was huh. the case. Well, but I didn't know a lot the show, of them. The show beautifully produced. And, Southern um, Italy is something I'd be interested in seeing. Yeah. That's why I we we couldn't figure out. We were both Kim and I were both trying to dissect like when they talked about Southern Italy, and it, it really mean? doesn't say it in the notes. Yeah. Are they talking? It said the heel of the boot, though. So maybe yeah, that so does that give is, us some description. That isn't the Amalfi Coast. So that's then, not so. the Amalfi Coast. Right. That's so right. That's Calab- Cal- is it? I don't know how to pronounce uh, it. Calabria. 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 Is that how I thought it was Calabria, but but yeah. I, who knows? I think it's I'll go with your knowledge. There you go. Um, Being a Yankee in the room. <laughs> <laughs> About yeah. to the Italian. Well, we just had a discussion about pecans versus pecans. Um, what do you go with? I say pecans. Yeah, me Although, too. when I'm down south, I can catch myself going a little more towards pecans. Really? Yeah. Is it a suck? Because I, I grew up saying pecans. So, I don't... Well, in your, what do you say? You also in say in your... In your um, what's her name? The lady. The French chef. Oh, oh, Julia Child. In your Julia Child's voice. Pecans. <laughs> 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 of course, she's got the glass of wine going too. <laughs> <at the same laughs> yeah, I course. don't it talk. Depends how much I had to drink. I, I think. think. You know. So, know. how do you say it in New York? I would say most New Yorkers probably say pecans. Pecans, pecans yeah. Because they also you. Because in New York, you also say carrot, right? <laughs> don't you say carrot. Say carrot. 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 Oh, okay. Is there another way? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Up here. 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 Up and they have dozens and dozens and dozens of chefs that, you know, they bring it to different parts of the world and how they're cooking. And it re edited for me. Um, I, I do a lot of campfire cooking anyway, but they were digging the pits and doing all that sort of thing. I'm thinking, holy shit, I know what I'll be doing this winter, you know? I'm going to make an oven out there because I love making my breads and stuff like that. So now this year, I'll be bringing that to the Everglades. I'll be digging in and making my own oven. Um, yeah, do you do you use cast iron? What what do you use for? Uh, I like cast iron, but for practicality, I mean, it's just too heavy to carry around. Yeah, you know, so um, I use a lot of the nonstick. I showed you one of the so the um, things. It's almost like a wok that I use. It's a frying pan wok. Is it Teflon coated? It's Teflon coated. Yeah, I, I prefer cast. Yeah, you know, all around, but it's just too heavy to you know. If In I'm a perfect for, world, yeah, you could have the time and space to use cast iron yeah in my yeah. house that's all and i care have. for it really yeah. oh yeah the pots i had everything all griswold i introduced the name to um eric and uh, all griswold was the brand name and i had you know everything from three quarts down onto even little specialty items that uh, make cornbread the shape of corn the shape of ear of corn yo wow and little hard things i mean i got into it it was one of my hidden secrets nobody knew about, you know. <laughs> I think our cast iron frying pan is the most used frying pan. In oh. The oh, really? Yeah. Oh, oh they are. Oh, I'm, I'm so jealous. I feel like they're 25 bucks. Per it isn't month. that. It isn't about that. It's it's. I'm down here, and oh. I don't get a chance to cook well, them. once you right. see someone, you're fine down here with it. You really are. To clean it, though, Ed. You, you have to clean it. You, you don't, don't, you don't do it. the soap and suds mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Not with cast iron. You, you once you've got that season. This is, okay, this is what, okay, I'm going to give you my scenario. And, t- and, cor- and, I, and I'm sure you can correct me. I'm waiting for you to correct me. Uh, so I cook on the grill, charcoal, 
the thing is really super hot, yeah. right? And then there's the, the fat and stuff like that. And I, I don't have, so once I'm done cooking, I need to eat it right away. Right. And yeah. so it sits on there and whatever oils are in there, don't get like a nice seasoning oil. They get like a burnt oil, oh. like a, like a, like well, a to take dark it off the fire. What? You have to take it off the fire. Well, know, how, off how am I going to take it off the fire? You take it off the fire. You how? Cover how you take off this 25 pound thing off a of thing? Well, You're not going to grab it with you, your you hands. You lobster mm -hmm. traps, you take it out with your muscles. But do, you, you, you how do you like, hold it? You, with a pot holder. holder. Those of gloves. That's what I use all the time. You know what those of gloves are? Yeah. yeah. That's of all. gloves are super. And then what do you do with it? Well, if you can't eat it right away, I cover it all in foil so that it's still cooling down, but not cooling down fast. You still have a hot meal when you're ready for it. And then no, the, I take the food out of it, but I mean, uh, what do you do with the, so, with the so, hot, pan, hot so pot? Take pan. the hot pan, cold water. Yeah. put it all off to the side. I can't put it in cold water. I don't have fresh water. You don't have fresh water. Put the hot water. pan off to the side, right? Let it sit and cool down for a little bit. And then you, and because the pan is seasoned, you can typically wipe everything out when yeah. it's slightly cool. Okay, down. so, okay. So here is my, paper, so I, I think towels. that I understand from what you're saying right. what my pro where my failure in my process is i need to have some i need to have some silicone gloves or something that so i can grab gloves. the hot pot right. and then take it off and put right. it aside right. so then i can so it doesn't get you know, that you, nasty burnt you know, right. stuff you know in. how the you know how a cast iron pan has the handle well it usually has a little rectangle Lip on the other side on the other side so because it's so heavy to hold like for me i can't flip i can't yeah. flip omelets in it yeah. so but you use that you take your pair of gloves, they really work, on cast iron, and then you grab both and put it on a cool, so you grab it from both ends and put it on a cool place. Okay, so, now I got it. Okay, so that's my, that's gonna be my process. And if it's really bad, I still, I'll use some cold water, and you know those, I call them copper pads? Yeah. You know, there's no soap involved in them. Right, I'll just give it a good swish and a good rinse, and right. then I use the paper towel yeah. and dry it but off. He, he could definitely have a cast iron pad. Oh, for sure. Every time I have it, I just, all right. Well, just try it. They're twenty-five bucks. I have them. I have several of them. It's just I. They look. See that right there, right next to my chimney. Yeah. There's a cast iron thing, but it's got like oil in the bottom of it. Yeah, he bites on the Patriots cooker. Come look. Come. We'll take it home and clean it up, and try to reseason. Take it home, clean it up, reseason it, and then try cleaning it when it's not like totally caked in. When it's uh, you not. season them in the oven at all? You know how to season those pots and those pans? Yeah, you put the oil or bacon. I usually yeah. use bacon. In the the first time I ever cook with one of those, I put bacon in it. Yeah, bacon's right. Just the bacon fat. Right. And that's bacon the bacon. Fat. I got bacon. Thank you, Eric Lorden, for my bacon too. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. the ribs. That looks yum. Oh. There you go. I've been eating like a frog. <laughs> oh my god he's taking care of it. all right we're at an hour two minutes and 46 seconds <laughs> the Gloucester cast 253 is in the books thank you guys for well coming done. well done